Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I like working out at a gym, but I hate how tired and sweaty I get. I still drink water, but I always forget to bring a water bottle. And believe me, I need water even more than a sea creature does. Tea at the Tree Dome is the episode where Spongebob meets Sandy Cheeks and learns about air. Like Help Wanted and Reef Blower, Tea at the Tree Dome aired on May 1st, 1999 after the 1999 Kids' Choice Awards. This is the first official 11 minute episode of the entire series since episode 1 was 8 minutes and episode 2 was 3 minutes. This is the episode that introduces Sandy Cheeks, the only female of all 7 of the main characters. She wasn't introduced in the pilot, but it's not what that episode was about. This episode introduces another important character, so it's important that it shows off Sandy in a good way. With the introduction of Sandy, this starts the trend of one of, if not the most, popular shipping of the show, Spongebob and Sandy, or Spandy for short. Of course, any show at all will have its fans and casual viewers ship a guy character and girl character together, and this show is no different. However, Steven Hillenburg has stated that he never wanted Spongebob to have a love interest since sea sponges are asexual and he wanted Spongebob to be the same. That does not stop speculation or shipping at all. Countless people still think these two characters have feelings for each other, but the crew denies it. It's possible there might have been a love interest planned for Spongebob, but Steven Hillenburg most likely turned it down. But Spongebob is not about romantic relationships, it's about comedy and absurdness. So let's watch the episode and relive Spongebob and Sandy meeting for the first time. So the episode starts up and immediately there's a return of music for the title car, as well as the usual opening credits and bubble transitions. Okay, things are already looking more standard. We see jellyfish fields for the first time, as well as jellyfish and seeing Spongebob jellyfishing for the first time, wearing his jellyfishing glasses. The jellyfish in this episode is purple, while in later episodes, they are pink with spots. After failing to catch a jellyfish, Spongebob hears a girl straining and runs to see what's happening, and sees a land squirrel fighting a giant clam. She seemingly defeats the clam, but it eats her, so Spongebob tries to save her. When he tries to open the clam, he gets flung off because the squirrel also opened it from the inside. Then he tries to break the clam's shell, but he ends up inside the clam as well. So the land squirrel saves him. He discovers that she likes karate too. They introduce each other, and we learn the name of the land squirrel is Sandy. They quickly become friends, and Sandy says she's wearing an air helmet. When Sandy says she needs her air to breathe, Spongebob says he loves air, despite not knowing what it is. I don't really blame him for saying this though, I'm like that all the time. I would postpone doing homework or studying for an exam to go out with a girl. Sandy invites Spongebob to her house for tea and cookies the next day, which he agrees to. Then he runs back and asks Patrick what there is. He tells Patrick that he met a girl who wears a hat full of air, which Patrick thinks he means she puts on airs, which he deems as fancy talk. He proceeds to tell Spongebob to hold his pinky in the air in order to be fancy, and then he calls his friend Spongebob Fancy Pants. The next day, Patrick takes Spongebob to Sandy's house with flowers and gives him support. When the water drains from the area in between the sea and the entrance to the tree dome, Spongebob freaks out. When Sandy opens the door, he discovers what no water truly means and starts to dry up. Spongebob needs water, but Sandy gives him a tour of her house and seemingly doesn't notice how he's slowly drying up. He tries to soak up the water from Sandy's birdbath, but this barely helps him at all. Even Patrick can't tell Spongebob's in danger and reminds him about his pinky. To be fair, he doesn't know about air either and he's only outside the tree dome. Later, Spongebob gives Sandy the flowers he brought for her and she finally starts to notice something with Spongebob. She asks if she can get him anything and he says water, but Sandy just says she's going to put the flowers in a vase. Girls ignoring you, haven't seen that before. Spongebob tries to leave Sandy's house and get water, but after a couple of second thoughts he decides to stay thinking he doesn't need water. I still kind of see that, I would avoid paying my student loan so I could spend that money on time with a girl. Then Sandy comes out with the flowers in a vase full of water. Sandy wants to know more about Spongebob, but he's staring at the water and literally dying. She starts to notice something and get worried, but the cookies were done baking so she goes back inside her tree. 
SpongeBob thinks he doesn't need it, but gives in and yells what every college student says whenever they go out on the weekends for drinks, or what I said when I needed more Mario games in 2020. I need it! Patrick yells at SpongeBob about his pinky, and SpongeBob drinks the water from the vase. He tries to run out of the tree dome, but Patrick stops him trying to help him not blow his chance with a girl. Then Patrick realizes how there's no water in the dome, and we hear him say an iconic line, in my opinion, for the first time. WHAT KIND OF PLACE IS THIS?! SpongeBob and Patrick try to escape, but they both were drying up and were too weak to leave. Sandy comes out and sees them both... dead. She gives them helmets and fills them with water, saving their lives. She says they should have asked for water if they needed it. SpongeBob did ask for it! His life was at stake because he needed it! Sandy gives them tea and proposes a toast to new friends, but their helmets prevent them from drinking it, so she puts the tea bags in the helmets, making them breathe tea. They all drink their tea with their pinkies up, and then the episode ends. So that was Tea at the Tree Dome, and it was pretty good. The plot was a little on the simple side, but it provided a good glimpse to what Sandy is like, especially since her most iconic trait is her karate skills. Karate is what most people think of when thinking Sandy, which makes for some of the most memorable episodes in the entire series, like episode 29, Karate Choppers. We now know what six of the seven main characters are like, with the only remaining main character being Plankton, who will be introduced a couple episodes down the line. Sandy is the only female out of all the main characters, and while she might be known as the main character who makes the least amount of appearances, she is definitely one of the most memorable characters of the show. Her character is also more diverse than what we see here, but her most iconic trait, her karate skills, are shown off in a nice way. Also, she was never shown directly introducing herself to Patrick, but the fact that they are still friends as of this episode is great and sets up one of the most iconic trios of the series. Some people may say Spongebob, Patrick, and Squidward are the most iconic trio of the series, and I won't argue that, but for those who like girls more than guys, this trio is perfect since Sandy is here, and she is still prevalent. Also, fun fact, this is the second episode in a row where a character can't breathe due to the lack of water. In the previous episode, Squidward couldn't breathe when the entire ocean was sucked up from the reef blower. Here, Spongebob and Patrick almost die from the lack of water in Sandy's tree dome. Speaking of which, the Tree Dome is also a noteworthy location of the show, although not quite as common as the Krusty Krab, and the main gist of it was set up perfectly. A polyurethane dome designed to keep out the water, and the characters need helmets filled with water to breathe when visiting. It doesn't appear as much as Sandy herself, but it's still well known in the show, and overall, this episode was a great introduction to Sandy and her house, which are still vital to the series. Tea at the Tree Dome is pretty cool, and it introduced the most notable female character of the whole series, Sandy Cheeks. While she may make the least amount of appearances out of all the seven main characters, she's still an important and great part of the show. And while this episode shows how important water is to every living organism, I recovered after that last sweat, and now I don't feel the need to hydrate much anymore. <coughs> Ah, that's better.